but yeah, with the uh, with the yen um, yield curve control and the pound, um, there was a question from and the notes from Doctor Ninja who said um, in the group call today, could you explain the fundamentals behind the pound yen sell with the pound being bullish recently and the yen being a buy? I would love to hear why the yen is a buy over the pound. Thanks. And um, and so what I'll do is I'll just I'll just say this. Uh, basically, what is what, what Dr. Ninja is referring to is this. Now, yesterday there were two setups i did only mention one because um i try not to um i know traders typically tend to blindly uh, just follow what i do and i don't want traders to follow blindly what i do yeah um and so there was a there was an analysis that i did on the uh, pound aussie right and again i explained it i posted a video and i explained it and i thought it was definitely not the best trade in the world right it was definitely not the best trade i had a lot going against it but 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 there were reasons why i thought it was an interesting um trade right it was an interesting trade and i said if i'm going to get involved in this um i would probably want uh, a bit more confirmation i'm looking for definitely a certain confirmation in order for me to to, to get involved in that. Uh, but what I didn't mention was the pound yen, which also pretty much had um, an even better setup, to be fair. Um, you know, we had the, 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 the highs here, nice, clearly defined highs, and prices um, went to, went up here. Now, if you are a lifetime member, and I'm sure I set an alert, did anyone see the alert in the, uh, did it come up? Educational alerts. I'm hoping it did. Yeah. So yesterday, if you were, if you're a lifetime member, you get educational alerts. And educational alerts are not sig. It's not a signal service or anything like that. It's just to let you, um, to give you an idea of what um, stop hunts look like, right? And so whether you take those trades or not is totally up to you. And I'm not saying that I take every single one of these trades, not at all, um, but. When I see a good stop hunt setup or a good, you know, uh, CPR setup somewhere, right? There was one on the um, uh, CAD Swiss at one point. Um, then, you know, you look at it, it's up to you whether you want to take it, but it's for educational purposes, right? It's only for educational purposes. So if you, if this alerts and you go to the chart and you're looking at the chart and you can't see that there's a, there's a stop hunt, then you've got some work to do, right? Because... I'm telling you there's one there and if you can't see it then um yeah you have to go back through the course but if you can then see it then it's like ah okay it's an educational alert and then if it's something that you do want to take you know fundamentally then you then pretty much go for it so for those of you who are in the lifetime members um you would have seen the stop hunt go off right and it's something that i actually was interested in so um as prices came up Right as prices came up to that level, yeah, and what I explained as well in the pound Aussie one, which was whenever you get something like this, whenever you see a stop hunt where you just get the move go kind of parabolic up to the level in in a quick in quick succession, and it goes up to that level, yeah. I like these types of stop hunts because typically what you'll find, and I say typically, not all the time, of course, but if, you know, you get the move like this and it's not really driven by any major news, um, you, you know, if, 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 you know, you get a stop hunt around here where prices start to come back inside, um, it can be a really good stop hunt because you've got, you know, unfair auctions, um, underneath you for those of you that know about unfair auctions and also as well just from a bigger time frame perspective again going back to the daily as i you know said remember that auctions yeah auctions meaning that that was clearly yeah the, the high was clearly an expensive area recently yeah so this was clearly an expensive area expensive or, or cheap, depending on which one you want to buy, right? And that was cheap or expensive, which one you want to buy, right? Now, the question always is when you get to ultimate obvious lows and highs is why is price likely to break higher and continue trading higher from here, 
Yeah, that was the that's the, uh, the 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 question that you answer with fundamental analysis and risk sentiment because if you know that, then you should understand you know what what value is. And so, um, for me, the, the the Japanese yen was just too it was too good not to take the trade in terms of the I've been you know bullish on the um, on the on the on the yen. Um, for a while, I'm gonna say for a while, but yeah, I would say for for if anyone who's paid attention, I've pretty much been talking about me going long on the yen, and I just wanted to prove that by um, typing in JPY and just giving you um, some of the um, some of the things that I was saying at the time, right? And so, one second, let me just scroll down. What page am I on? Sorry, what page am I on? Number one, right? Right, so let me just read this out. So da, 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 I was saying, yeah, that good question. I said on the 29th of the third, yeah. So Wednesday, March 29th. Um he says, good question. I said, we'll have to see if the data is a blip or at the start of a trend. Now, this was in response to a trader who had said that the inflation for Japan had come down a bit, right? Which it had, but again, I was just saying that it could be just a blip, or it could be, you know, um, you know, just a bit of a pullback on inflation. Uh, we have to wait and see. But ultimately, I said um, it says. Uh, it says, uh, it says if, hold on, let me turn on, let me turn on. Move on, Mike. Um, I said if it's a one-off reading on the way to higher or sticky inflation, then the Bank of Japan will still likely look to adjust their yield curve control. Now inflation is um, now inflation is still higher than their 2% target, so the pressure is still on. Let's wait for the BOJ on their thoughts. I'm personally still a buyer of the yen, uh, right? But waiting for decent pullbacks. So decent pullbacks meaning a nice price, yeah? Um, and then I think there was one time where, what was that, maybe 20th? I said, fundamentals typically don't change so quickly, but the events recently have thrown things up in the air. So there is a lot of uncertainty in positioning. Eventually, the dust will settle. But one thing that looks highly probable is the yen strengthening. Yeah, so you can pretty much see, and that was on the 20th, uh, March the 20th, I was, my, my, my bias was still to buy the yen. Yeah, regardless, because and if you go to the yen channel, which I highly advise you do, I don't know if many of you actually go to the uh, go to the channels to, to read the news. And I get, it, you know, people have got lives and are busy and things like that. But if you actually read back, you know, through the, um, the, the things that I post and the articles that I post, you'll see and watch the videos, you'll see that the the, the um, they're very, you know, uh, bullish in terms of um the analysis surrounding yield curve control. And it's been said and repeated over and over and over again that the Bank of Japan are likely to end yield curve control. It's just a matter of when, whether it's going to be April, whether it's going to be May or June. And in fact, nobody knows because the Bank of Japan pretty much came out and they said that they don't even want to, or one of the policy architect signals, yield curve could tweak, may come as a surprise. So the Bank of Japan, as we know, and if anyone who's been trading, um, been with Trading 180 for at least the last six months, um, knows that the Bank of Japan can just come out of nowhere and start intervening, right? Who remembers the last time they intervened twice? Like nobody, they, they just did it straight, you know, without nobody really knowing. I think one of the times at least. Actually, maybe it might have been both times. Does anyone remember? We knew it was coming at some point. But they just, you know, decided, you know, yes. decided to do it. Hello, Rudy one? Hello, Rudy one? Yeah, I remember when it happened. Yeah, you remember. Yeah, you remember. Right? Yeah. So they have a, they they have a history. A... Yeah, they have a history of surprise in the market. And they're actually telling you now that they can do it at any time. Yeah, the, it, the, the curve tweak may come as a surprise. Yeah. yeah. And so... I... Yeah, go on. I think it was more so going off the comment that I made. Um, it wasn't that I was saying they wasn't changing the yield control. Mm. I was just saying that at this moment, they're not making any changes. 
Even oh right, the- okay, yeah. No, I wasn't. I wasn't yeah. implying that you were, and I'm sorry if, it, if, it, if that if that's the way it came across. It wasn't. It wasn't. I wasn't that. It was just. I was just basically just explaining that. Um, you know, it's yeah. At the moment, that they have to say that, though, don't they? They have to kind of say, you know, the rhetoric. They're not going to do it because they're not. They're not trying to signal or telegraph to everyone when it's likely or when it's not so they're going to keep saying it until they don't right that's the the, the that's that's the that's the surprise that they're trying to uh create right and so but if you look at if you if you look at everything not just you but just just talking in general if we look at all the information that's been coming out over the past you know month or so yeah you'll you'll get a really good picture as to why it's likely to happen at some point. So any pullbacks on that yen as we get closer to April and then if nothing happens in April, cool, nothing happens in April. But the market is still going to position for a surprise or a potential surprise. Of course, it is data dependent. Sorry, it is data dependent and, in, and, and you know based on inflation and what goes on in the rest of the world. But ultimately, you know, all the analysts are pretty much saying or that I've been watching and listening to and reading are saying that, you know, they just can't, um, the yield curve control is just not sustainable. In fact, if I can remember the quote somewhere, ah, oh, where did I see it? Where did I see it? Ah, uh, oh, do you know what? I read so much. One second, it's complicated. For, uh, right, here it is. So academic, right? Uh, Kazuo Udia will be replacing Karuda as governor of the Bank of Japan uh, this weekend and faces a thorny problem of what to do with the complicated uh, policy framework that has resulted in the buying of assets larger than the size of the Jap- uh, Japan's economy. NACO calls for policy adjustment to add a majority uh, sorry, add to a majority of economists expecting a change from the Bank of Japan in June, according to a survey conducted uh, to around two months ago. So it wasn't that one in particular, I don't think, but it was, but if you, you know, they, they're buying assets um, larger than the size of the Japanese economy, that has to stop to some degree, right? Oh, here it was. So the yield curve control, yeah, uh, should be reviewed, even if that results in short-term shocks, Nako said, in an interview on Monday, he didn't specify the preferred timing of the de- or detailed process for the review. And he says this can't go on forever, right? That just goes to show you that, that you know, little things like that, it's almost saying that it's inevitable, right? That they have to end their yield curve control. So when I'm reading all these things and I'm reading it every day or every other day in the news and I'm, you know, watching the videos and it's being drummed in my head that it's coming, it's coming at some point, or I've got to just position myself. That's the reason why I went short on the, uh, the pound, uh, the pound dollar, but why the pound specifically the pound, right? Um, and it was just the fact that there was a trade setup and I hadn't taken a trade for a little while. The pound is actually projected to do really well in April. I don't know if any of you have seen the seasonality report, which is, uh, and just the reports of the pound anyway, uh, are very positive because they're not, and I'll say very positive, but I use that um, maybe out of context, but it's not as bad as what is was expected because the pound were expected to go into quite a deep recession. And in fact, now they're expected to avoid a recession and with inflation, you know, coming out higher recently and the bank of Japan, I'm sorry, the bank of England being a bit more hawkish uh, on the, um, you know, and maybe hiking interest rates. Um, yeah. The pound is definitely something where, or, or a currency where, um, you know, typically it wouldn't have made sense to go short on that, yeah. But factoring in where we were, top of the auction, obvious auction, the fact that price has gone parabolic, the, the fact that you know, I think that the yen, um, you know, with, with, with when you compare the two, what's you know a stronger signal? The fact that um, you know the, the Bank of England may hike one more time. Right, they've been hiking pretty much 
um, you know, for, for the whole year, right? That's nothing new. But what is new is the, the uh, Bank of Japan changing their monetary policy after keeping their, um, their policy on hold for so long right that is more of a big deal right than than the bank than the bank of england and so i just took a chance because you know that's basically what we're doing they're just trading the probabilities and so this this trade just happened to work out yeah that's it that's really the reasoning behind why i went um you know short on that pound yen 